Hello my friends and welcome to the Curate Study. My name is Reverend Mark Kerslake and it's great to have you here no matter who you are, where you are or what you believe. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time to the Curate Study, I'm the rector in a group of eight parishes, ten churches in a little green corner of East Devon which is in the southwest of England. But we include this or we count this, the Curate Study, as our ninth parish, a virtual parish, and you as our parishioners. So it's great to have you with us today. We're going to do what we always do. So we're going to have some music, some prayers today. We're going to have a Bible reading and we're going to have a sermon or a talk, call it what you will. And today we have a guest speaker, Ian Spicer. So you will have seen Ian before if you're familiar with this channel. Ian is a warden in one of our parishes and he's also a reader in training. So he's studying on a theological course to become an ordained lay leader in the Church of England and he's a very good speaker so I'd encourage you to hang around for that. Before we begin the prayer for this, this Sunday which is called the Collect in the Anglican Church. O oh God the strength of all those who put their trust in you mercifully accept our prayers and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you. Grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now it's time for our first hymn, which is a, uh, a lovely old traditional hymn. Come Holy Spirit, our hearts inspire. This is the part of our service where we unburden ourselves. We put down all those heavy things that we are carrying in our hearts that made us feel guilty um, or just that are, that are sitting there in the corner or the darkness of our memory or our conscience. And we do so certain in the knowledge that our God is a God, a God of love and forgiveness. So let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil distortions and hatreds. Let us confess our share of what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for all his children. And in the silence that follows, 
Examine your hearts and conscience and bring before God those things that you would have him forgive you for. And now may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you to his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now it's time for our reading, which is from the book of Mark, and it is the healing of the blind man, Bartimaeus. So that's Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. It gives me great pleasure now to uh, hand over to Ian, who's going to preach to us. But before I do, each um, summer over the last two years, we have run what we have called a sermon series. So we've invited people to come and speak on their favourite piece of scripture and to use a piece of music or a piece of art or anything really to help them do that. We're going to run that again this year across the new mission community of eight parishes and ten churches. So if there is a piece of scripture which at some point in your faith journey has really inspired you and you would like to share a little bit about that to talk maybe in one of our churches or maybe more maybe online for up to an absolute maximum of 10 minutes using just the spoken word or a piece of music or something else to help people understand what that scripture means to you. I'd love to hear, hear from you. Please do email me at fromthecuratestudy at gmail uh, and I can talk to you about how that might happen. Anyway, this morning, let's hand over to Ian. In our reading today, we heard the story of blind Bartimaeus receiving his sight. This is a story I've known forever. I learned it as a child in Sunday school and I never really ever gave it much thought until one day, and I really can't remember when, someone pointed out something in the story that was quite extraordinary. Jesus asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? I mean, think about it. You have a healer, you have a blind man, isn't it obvious what he wants? Why does Jesus ask a question? If you heard my sermon from a few weeks ago, and it's on this YouTube channel if you want to catch up with it, I preached on Jesus encountering his disciples after his resurrection, and I picked up on a similar theme of questioning. On meeting his disciples, Jesus' opening line is the question to Mary at the tomb, why are you weeping? To a loved disciple at one time, why are you troubled? And to Peter at the lakeside, do you love me? Jesus' questions open up situations. They get to the heart of the matter. We are very good at often seeing other people's problems and assuming we know how to fix them. You almost find yourself wanting to say to Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, you are blind. You obviously need to see. But Jesus, rather than assuming he knows best, asks Bartimaeus what he wanted. As it turns out, Bartimaeus wanted to see. 
but it could have been something else, another ailment perhaps, or maybe he had concern for someone else altogether. Jesus has a habit of asking questions and he has not changed much the last 2,000 years. How can that be? Two weeks ago, we celebrated Pentecost, the birth of the church, when the Holy Spirit came down, filled the disciples and equipped them with the gifts they would need to take the good news to all nations. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus himself, and he's still very active today, stirring us up, calling us to action and raising questions. Now, in my experience, when the Holy Spirit is mentioned, it can have a negative response. It's all about rolling in the aisles, isn't it? All about talking in tongues. Isn't it just hyped up emotion? Or maybe just met with puzzlement or bewilderment? For me, that's a conversation for another day. But what I will say is that an encounter with the Holy Spirit will leave a door open for you to take another path. Perhaps I can best illustrate this with examples from my own life. Encounters with the Holy Spirit have left me with questions that I'm sure Jesus himself was asking. When I was about 25, I found myself in a very lonely place. I was withdrawn and very emotionally cut off from others. I was trapped in a world and I could not break out of it. As these things happened, I found myself at a meeting led by a well-known faith healer. Not sure what I was doing there, not sure what I wanted or what my expectations were. A blind lady at the front received her sight and I could feel this extraordinary power moving just above my head. And then a question arose, what do you want me to do for you? And I knew instantly, I wanted what that blind lady had. I wanted healing, not physical healing, but emotional healing. And Jesus said, yes, I've known all along. Later in my thirties, I was again grappling with hurts, fears and insecurities, particularly the fear of rejection. I was prayed for on several occasions that I'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. And through it all came a question, what do you want me to do for you? My thoughts clarified and I knew. My answer was, I don't want to be alone. I want to share my life with someone. And Jesus said, yes, I know. And now you know that I know. And it was not long after that that I met my, my, my wife, Maggie. More recently, as I was approaching retirement, feeling something new lay ahead, again the question arose, what do you want me to do for you? My answer was, I don't want to drift. I need a purpose. My fear was that retirement would be rather like those dead days between Boxing Day and New Year. Jesus said, yes, I know. And he led me to become a church warden and now to be a reader in training. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, knew the answers to my questions all along. I just needed the time and the space and the opportunity to clarify them. And it was a two-way conversation. The Spirit asked and I was allowed to speak. He worked the issues out together. And it was not all about my personal problems. It has caused me to look outside myself and to be called into his service. Mark has been talking a lot recently about change, particularly as we move forward with our new East Christ East Church's mission community. Also change as we adjust to a post-lockdown world. The task ahead seems huge, full of opportunities, yes, but huge all the same. It's a task we cannot take on in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us up and to equip us, to stir us up, to call us to action. But how does that happen? Where do we begin? How about starting with a question? 
How are you feeling right now? Are you happy and settled in your faith? Or is there a discomfort, a discontentment, an unfulfilled dream, a longing, something deep down that you can't find words for? I've experienced that, and it was by encountering the Holy Spirit that I found the answer to the question Jesus was asking. What do you want me to do for you? As I look at what lies ahead, I feel rather like a rabbit caught in the headlights. Right now, when the question arises, what do you want me to do for you? I really have no intelligible answer. I need more of the Holy Spirit. We all need more of the Holy Spirit. Will you join me in opening our hearts to what he might have to say to us, to actively seek him out and to be prepared to respond to his question, what do you want me to do for you? Thank you, Ian. Now it's time for our prayers. So they're going to be short and simple this morning to give you the opportunity to still your heart and ask what you would ask for Jesus and the Holy Spirit to do for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by the faith in the Lord Jesus, your Holy Spirit has made us alive in him and placed us into the family of God and the body of Christ. Thank you that he has set his seal of ownership upon us and taken up residence within our hearts, so to empower us in our spiritual walk as he gradually transforms us into the lovely likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that the Holy Spirit would lead and guide us in all things, and that we would learn to listen to the gentle promptings of his voice as we hear your word or commune with you in prayer. Give us grace to recognise his still small voice as we search through the scriptures each day and the wisdom to discern your spiritual judgment when godly Christians are prompted to offer direction and give us advice in our lives or when we just hear you speaking to us in prayer or in nature. May we maintain an open heart and develop a teachable spirit so we may walk in your ways and live a life that is well pleasing to you and glorifies your name. And in the silence that follows, I would invite you to ask the questions of the Holy Spirit that you have on your heart. We bring our time of prayer to conclusion as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn is something a little bit different. Uh, there's no lyrics for you to sing along with this one. Uh, to be honest, I think you probably would struggle to sing along with this one. Uh, but it's an amazing, upbeat, just party of a song. Uh, it's a version of a very popular song by the Rend Collective called Build Your Kingdom Here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. 
church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the poor Before you go, my friends, a final blessing. May Christ who makes saints of sinners and who has transformed all of those in the Christian faith, raise and strengthen you that you may be transformed to transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Until we meet again, my friends, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless.